Hi, this um, slightly longer than normal tutorial is going to look at the concept of inter-rater reliability testing. It's an area we get a lot of inquiries on the website and um, we're going to look at four key areas. First of all, just an overview of what inter-rater reliability testing is and how you would use a coding comparison query uh, using CAPAS coefficient to measure uh, inter-rater reliability. Um, explain the process about um, logging in because that's an area where people become often confused and uh, come unstuck trying to use Invivo as the tool to do this task. Um, we're then going to set up a query and we're going to explain the results of the query. So the concept is multiple coders coding one document. So we open up Thomas, we open up our nodes and we code in the normal way against these nodes. Now the key concept to, uh, to address this, if you want to change coders then and have somebody else code Thomas's interview, is to ensure that you're, you're logged in correctly as yourself as the user. To ensure that this happens, you need to change an, an option in Invivo that is not a default option. It does not come preset with the software. So if you go to File Options and tick this box, Prompt for User on Launch, then every time you log into Invivo or you run Invivo, you'll be asked to log in. If you're logged in on your Windows account, it will use the same uh, username and password and initials as you have, but you can change those at any time and you can add as many users as you want. This means that if I now log out of Invivo and log back in again, I'll be prompted and my second user can then log in and code. And even if I've asked somebody else to manually code, I can log in as them by creating an account and then code for them uh, from the paper-based uh, coding that they've sent back. So once multiple coders have coded Thomas, we're now ready to run an inter reliability test. The first thing I'm going to do is do a visual test by just switching on the coding stripes for the users so I get a sense of who's coded what. So if I go to View, Coding Stripes, Selected Items, and I choose the users, and I can see here what users I have, then I can visually see who has coded what text to what nodes. And so that just gives me a sense of the level of agreement, not only who coded what, but what codes they put them to. And I have an option here to switch on the substripes to show as many of those as I like for my coding. And I can see the detail behind that as well in a visual way. So we can then have a discussion among the coders as to what level of agreement we've achieved and why one person coded something one way and somebody else a different way. It's not scientific, it's not measuring the, the levels of agreement, but it's a good starting point to align thinking before you run the coding query, the coding comparison query, which will give us that uh, detailed report as to how the coders are agreeing. So to do that, we go to our queries. And we have one already set up. Now we're using the standard tutorial here rather than the ones from the training workshops because everybody who watches this video will have a copy of this same query on their machine. This is the preloaded uh, tutorial that comes uh, with Invivo called Environmental Changes Down East. So the coding comparison query has been set up here. So we set up a new query and we add to the, each of the comparisons, the user A and user B groups, we can add groups of users or individual users by simply selecting them here and choosing which users you want to compare. You can also narrow it down to certain codes. If you have particular codes that you want to uh, look at, um, then you can just look at them in a folder or you can create a set, which is available in other tutorials, um, to create that set of nodes and narrow the search. Or you can look across everything. And equally, we will select Thomas's interview as the source. And that's all there is to setting it up. I'm going to allow both Kappa's coefficient and the percentage agreement to be displayed. Although this can be a little bit confusing because 
it's two different ways of reporting on the same thing. We're going to concentrate on Kappa's coefficient because it is generally accepted as valid uh, by qualitative researchers and mainly because it takes into account probabilities. So we're going to run the query and this is what we get. These are the codes and the segments of Thomas's interview. We've kept this reasonably simple to explain it better that, um, that we now have available. These are the nodes and here's Thomas's interview. Kappa measures between zero and one. So where you see levels of agreement here, then that's where there is a, an agreement between zero being uh, no agreement and one being total agreement between our coders. And the detail is set out here then in these other columns. Of course, I can drill down on any of these to see the detail behind them. And here you can see the various codes and the levels of agreement. And we can see here that uh, HGP, this user, has coded this, uh, this segment, but EDR has coded a slightly smaller section of the same thing. And if I click on that, it's going to highlight for me the bit that each coder has done. So I can see exactly where they agree and disagree. Finally, I can, of course, export my report straight out into Excel, where it will look exactly the same. But now I can add an average cell at the bottom here, which will allow me to average the, the levels of Kappa's agreement across an entire transcript or set of transcripts or codes or set of codes. And that gives me a, a, a rounded view then, not only of the detail for each level of agreement, but an average level of agreement across the entire data set as well. So we've um, hopefully explained the concept. We've demonstrated how to log in and out of Invivo. We've set up uh, the query itself, run it, and explained the results. There's more information on Kappa's coefficient on our website, www.qdatraining.eu forward slash Kappa.